As promised, right on time, we are joined by the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. He is a Super Bowl champion. He is a Super Bowl MVP. He is a three-time NFL MVP. He is a nine-time Pro Bowl selection, which is tied for most in team history. A member of the 2010s All-Decade team. Good friend of the program. The Packers are going to open up against New Orleans on September 12th. We are joined by Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, there's a lot to talk about, a number of places where I could start. But first off, how are you doing, Aaron, and how is your life right now? It's great, buddy. Thanks for having me back on. I mean, it might not be as beautiful as the pictures that you like to post from your uh, your cabin up in the great state of Wisconsin, but it's been uh, it's been a good camp. It's good to be back with the guys. Um, you know, it, it's camp is way way different. Many older guys would probably say easier than it used to be. So it's been uh, it's been a nice uh, nice camp for us and. One more preseason game, and then things start picking up. Aaron Rodgers, my guest, my guy. I appreciate you saying that. From one California native to another, we can talk Wisconsin, which is always a blast. Let me ask you this, Aaron. Matt LaFleur had asked you to break the team down after the first day of practice, and the story goes that your message was about a positive mindset, how special it was to be back, and about embracing the journey. Why was that something that you wanted to share at the very start? Well, I think, you know, some of the – the themes that I like to talk about are, are very similar. It's the things that I that I research and am into and study on and meditate on. You know, the idea of a positive mindset and embracing uh, the present, uh, but also understanding you're on a journey. So, you know, those are kind of themes that, that I like to to talk to the guys about. The other part was really important to me, and, and you know, to be away from the team for the entire off season. Um, was obviously new for me and different. I just wanted the guys to know how special it was to be back with them, how you know thankful and grateful I was to be there with them, and to just reiterate to them my commitment. Um, you know, was a hundred percent, is a hundred percent to uh, the team, to my role as leader on the football team, and meant to this season. So you know, it was good. You know, when I, I was, it was kind of weird. It was like the first day of. You know, a, a new school almost when I walked in, even though I've you know been, been here for 16 years. Just those those nerves you get, those butterflies walking back into the stadium. But it was uh, I saw a couple of my favorite teammates right away. Preston Smith, I think, was in here, and Lucas Patrick, and I felt pretty at ease after hugging those guys and and uh, and starting to kind of get into the routine. Aaron Rodgers is my guest. I've made no secret of this, Aaron. I'm, I'm really fascinated, very interested, very intrigued by all the work that you've done off of the field, and I'm curious about that. I'm going to ask you about that, but when you talk about your teammates, something else that I think is very clear is the love that you have for the relationships that you have on that team, and not just with your offensive linemen, not just with your wide receivers. It's with all sorts of guys, like guys like Bronson, Orrin, and others. Why are those relationships so important to you? Well, I appreciate you asking that question. I think it's 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 fun to kind of talk philosophy of leadership. And one thing that's very important to me is is the way you treat people. Uh, in a position of leadership, people are always watching. They're always going to see uh, how you go about your business and how you treat certain people. Um, as a leader, you understand that different people have different buttons of inspiration that you can help push to get them uh, to be more comfortable, to give more of themselves, uh, to show what they're all about, um, but as a, as a leader, I think it's important that you show respect and kindness to everybody, not just the Devontae Adams of the world and the Zadarius Smiths, but you know, Orrin is my locker mate. He's a, just a super super guy. You know, he's uh, he's fun to be around, and unfortunately, we got these terrible plexiglass things between us, but. Uh, you know, we've had some good conversations over the last couple of years, and Bronson is one of those camp guys who kind of catches your eye. He is such a positive guy. I mean, I think he, every second of the day, it seems like, has a smile on his face. And I just love highlighting those guys because they're not always going to get the most pub, but they're they're the type of glue guys for uh, the beginning of a foundation of culture that are so important uh, in camp settings where you can lean on a guy like Bronson whether you tell him or not, which probably you won't, but just like being able to look over him and and like just kind of tap into that happiness that he has on a daily basis is is just a special thing to do. I know guys are looking at me for you know energy or enthusiasm or resolve or whatever it might be, and it's nice to have you know guys like that or you can draw your own inspiration from. And I just feel like it's important to you know treat those guys 
as if they are the Devontae Adams of the team because that, that to me, is, is what true leadership is all about. Aaron Rodgers on leadership and joining us. So, Aaron, if somebody listening right now is thinking, and, and I'm one of these people, but if somebody's thinking, you know, man, I want some of what Aaron has in terms of that peace of mind and that ability to remain present, is there a book or a two or a tactic that's been especially helpful for you, especially when things are challenging? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different things that you can do. I mean, I, I enjoy going to Barnes & Noble or a local bookstore and, and going in some of those self-help sections and seeing what some of the new books are. And that's not a terrible place to start. For me, I've been meditating for about a decade with regularity now, and it wasn't until this off season that I came upon Transcendental Meditation. Um, and I think the reason I mention this is because for a long time in my meditations, I've struggled with the idea of a quiet mind and almost uh, having some, some negative self-talk uh, if I couldn't quiet my mind in certain situations. What I learned in uh, TM is just a reminder that you have fifty to 70,000 thoughts on a daily basis. So instead of trying to clear your mind, and if you can't be you know, down on yourself for not you know, being able to meditate the right way, we, you know, in, in that practice, you embrace the, uh, the, the thoughts. You embrace the images in your mind, and the more that you embrace those, the more they actually dissolve and you're able to, to relax in the meditation even more. So, so learning TM this off-season has been a really you know, important part of, uh, of continuing to calm my mind and, and my heart rate uh, in moments where I need clarity or, or moments of uh, heightened uh, uh, you know, testosterone or whatever it might be where I need to just relax a little bit and calm down. Um, so researching ideas of meditation, I think, is a really good place to start. We don't take time, I think, in our daily lives to just pause and do nothing. It's look at your phone or maybe binge a TV show. There's, we need, I would just advise to embrace the silence a little bit more and, and, and to help turn your brain off. It doesn't have to be, you know, transcendental meditation or even, uh, you know, some other, you know, fad, meditation fad. It can just be, you know, listening to an instrumental song or reading a book or doing something where you're, you know, enjoying the, the silence, uh, which I don't think many people do on a daily basis. I appreciate that. Aaron Rodgers joining us. I could keep that up. I could have that conversation about life and mindset and never get to football. But before I let you go, why don't we talk a little bit of football? Also, you've gone to the NFC Championship game each of the last two seasons, Aaron. How does this current team in your mind compare to the two that have come before it? Well, it's different for sure. You know, we have a new defensive coordinator. Um, I think you're going to see different players having opportunities that maybe haven't in the last couple of years based on the scheme that, that they're playing. Um, offensively, it's a deep receiver room, which we've had some, some good ones over the years. Uh, this one is one of the best that we've had. It helps a lot having Randall Cobb come back, giving you a legit slot player. But I think... If you look at this camp compared to last camp, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Alan Lazard have really had fantastic camps. Now, last year they were in the top four for sure during training camp. But like I told Quez at lunch the other day, I said he's in the we don't worry about you anymore category with him and Devontae Adams, where it's like they <clears> – <throat> Tay is in a you know league of his own, but, but Marquez has become such a professional uh, with his practice habits – I just I give him so much credit for really truly becoming a pro and mastering his craft. I'm very very proud of him. Alan Lazard has had a fantastic camp, and I'll say this, Jim. What's interesting to me about both those guys is over the last couple of years, I've seen more growth in them off the field. I'm talking about habits and mindsets and uh, meditation and the things they're thinking about. I mean, Marquez hit me up in, in first day of camp. He said, "Hey." Uh, I want to start reading more. Can you give me some books? I'm like, yeah, it's the best thing you can ask me to do. So I went to, you know, Barnes and Noble and and got them some a little starter pack that I thought was pretty good. And um, it, but it's the way that they've approached their off the field training, not just physically but mentally, that allows them to be so calm and composed and comfortable on the field. Uh, I'm just so so proud of those two guys. Obviously, I love having Randall back and um, and the young kid from uh, from Clemson, uh, Amari, has, has done a nice job. But I, I really like those those receivers that we got. Aaron Rodgers joining me for a few more moments. Aaron, in terms of Devontae, a few weeks back, you and he both happened to post the same image from the last dance in your Instagram stories. Aaron, are you approaching this like it might be your last season in Green Bay? What is your approach? Yeah, I definitely am. But I did last year too, Jim. Um, 
I really felt like I was looking for some sort of sign that it wouldn't be my last season in Green Bay after um, uh, you know after the draft. Uh, felt great about the way I played. Didn't feel like there was any uh, kind of commitment past the 2021 season. So obviously went through the whole off season, and I've talked at length about that. But I think in order for me mentally to wrap my head around the season, the journey, and the and the focus it's going to take, I feel like I have to have that perspective. And this isn't some uh, you know ultimatum or you know major statement I'm making. Uh, it's just the perspective that I need personally to to put myself in the best frame of mind to be able to lead the right way. Um, because I think. With any great journey, you have to have uh, gratitude for the moments that make the journey special. And some of those moments are tied into the uniqueness of Green Bay, the uniqueness of being uh, a 17th year pro and the opportunities that that presents from a leadership standpoint. So I really feel like that's what puts me in the best frame of mind if I focus on how special this year is with no guarantees after next year and you know, I did last year with, and had obviously a lot of success, and, and that's what I'll be doing this year again. Sarah, and I got about 90 seconds. I want to ask you this really quickly. Jordan Love missed last week with that right shoulder injury. He's talked about your relationship is, quote, kind of like the master and the Padawan kind of thing. I'm curious, how would you describe that relationship? Uh, Yoda and Luke Skywalker. There you go. <laughs> no, there I'm you not go. sure. It, it seems more like Starsky and Hutch sometimes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been it's been good. You know, I really really enjoy being around him, and uh, you know he's a, he's a good kid. He's a really nice kid, and he asked uh, asked some good questions. He's progressed and gotten better. Uh, bummed for him, but hopeful that he'll be able to come back. I think he practiced. Uh, he did practice today. I think he did just about everything. So it'd be. It'd be great for him to be able to play this week against Buffalo and and uh, get some more action in. But it, it's been it's been really good. You know, we had conversations during the off season. Everything's going on, and and I'm I'm glad that I'm back and get to have another season with him. He is a Super Bowl champ, a Super Bowl MVP, a three time NFL MVP. You know the stats. Good friend of the program. And the Packers are going to open up at New Orleans on September 12th. He is Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, I appreciate the relationship. I appreciate the conversation. As always, thank you so much for doing that. Always a blast. You're the best, Jim. Thanks for that jungle karma, man. I need it. My man, I don't think that you do, but I'm glad to share it if I have it. Aaron Rodgers, great talking to you, Aaron. Thank you very, very much.